here on Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. If, if it is your first time here, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified so you don't miss any other episodes. And as always, you can catch these episodes unedited and our members only. Join today in the hot seat. He's back. Our friend Bob Daisley. Play with everybody from Ozzy, Gary Moore, Uriah Heap, Rainbow. He has a book out. Check it out. Links are in our description. Or you can click right above here for fact's sake. Click on that link. Order the book today. Great rock and roll stories from a rock and roll legend. In the meantime, it's all going to start now. Don't touch that dial. Mr. Bob Daisley, you're back in the hot seat. Welcome back, my friend. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's always nice to talk to you. Always great talking with you. Uh, as in the past, you've been on, and people love when you come on here. You get so many comments, and I think we'll have to do an episode where we get questions from the fans. So if you guys are watching right now, you have any questions, put them in the comments, and we'll bring Bob back, and we'll have him answer your questions. You know, I think yeah, that'll sure. be a fun yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. That'll be really cool. So make sure you all yeah, yeah. put your comments, put questions for Bob, and I'll take them, and we'll have Bob answer. We'll do another show. But you know what? Recently, and uh, we, uh, Brave World's put an article out, and I was just reading this, it popped in my news feed. Ozzy Osbourne mm -hmm. discusses those infamous unreleased Randy Rhodes rehearsal demos. And he, he's quoted to say, the quality is effing dreadful. There's a video. They have a podcast. The Osbournes, I guess, have, everybody has a podcast, right, these days? And uh, yeah. they're doing a podcast. And Jack Osbourne brings up in a recent uh, clip, it was on Twitter yeah. as well, uh, you know what? When is Ozzy going to let Bob Daisley release the recordings of Randy Rhodes? And and he, I think we might have, if I'm not mistaken, a video. Let's check this out really quick right here. Remember when I called you and said someone was spouting off on Twitter? Yeah. About, about... Uh, oh, did they answer they you never, back? They never, never answered back, but I just thought it was spouting a Spouting off on Twitter about what? Someone commented on, on a post and it was like, oh, when's, when's Ozzy going to let... Bob Daisley release the uh, the recordings of Randy Rhodes writing in the studio because they would have they were mm -hmm. had there's a supposedly I don't know if it exists does it exist but um, there's re there's audio recordings of Randy Dad Daisley uh, writing stuff for Blizzard or Diary mm -hmm. and this you know Daisley's gone out and saying like oh Ozzy's not letting me release it and I turned around and said. Why should he release it? He should give it to Randy's family. And Randy's family, it should be up to them if they release it exactly. or not. Exactly. The quality sucks. Oh, have you heard it? I, I, everything we oh, ever so did, we would record the fucking milkman. On a little cassette machine. The quality oh. is fucking dreadful. On oh. a tiny little cassette machine. And um, it's not for us to to do anything with. Yeah, interesting. What about this situation here and... and what are your thoughts about that? Claire? Well, I don't know if Ozzy's actually heard it. But, uh, there are snippets of what I have on my website, <clears throat> headed features. So if you go to features, you can hear little bits. And the quality is not bad at all. It's actually, uh, and it's not a little cassette player. It was done on my uh, boombox uh, that I used to record all our rehearsals on. Uh, I used to record the rehearsals re really just for us to, um, you know, have a reference of what we were doing as we were writing because, you know, the famous last words, oh, we'll remember that tomorrow, and, and I'd never, ever wanted to take that chance. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I used to record everything. That was the only reason I recorded everything was so I'd have a reference the next day and we wouldn't forget anything. But it, it, uh, it's pretty good quality, actually, for... Uh, you know, recorded on a cassette player, a big, a big cassette player, one of those boom boxes that in those days that were called ghetto blasters, but <laughs> people don't call them that anymore. But, <laughs> but um, still yeah, if anybody wants to hear the quality for themselves, you know, I mean, they can judge. It's on my yeah, website, on the features a little bit. I, I put snippets there, you know, I put a snippet for the anniversary of Randy's death. I put a snippet there for the when Lee passed away. There's, there's, I think, three or four snippets of about 30 or 40 seconds long. You can, you can uh, play 40 seconds of, of something legally without having to get permission. So, But, you know, 
that that was what my management offered it to them about oh I don't know how many years, good good ten or twelve years ago for the anniversary box set, but um, they wanted to buy it from me and then just let me hand it over sort of thing which I wouldn't do. But if it was you know if it was such shitty quality, why would they want to buy it? And they did want to buy it. So you know they they um, I, my manager and I took it to their representative in London. We played and I didn't leave it with them. I wouldn't leave it with anyone. I played him some stuff and he relayed to them and then they said they wanted to buy it from me. So if it's so shitty, why would they want to buy it? You know. But uh, I wouldn't sell it anyway because it would be it would just turn into another. Randy and Ozzy show sort of thing. It'll be edited and made to look like, oh, here we are. Randy and Ozzy did everything, you know. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't sell it, you know. I, I would certainly love to be able to release it. Um, and it's, it's you, know, it's, you know, she just said, oh, well, it's not for us. No, yeah. because I wouldn't sell yeah. it to him. But, but when you see Ozzy answering in the video, he looks aggravated, like his eyes, like the way he says it's, and it's something in his eyes, like he looks aggravated. It's effing shit, you know? And yeah, what you but just it's not. Had... Because, yeah, I, I remember there was a couple of guys that came here, Klein and Margolis, to do a film on Randy many years ago. It must be 10 or 12 years ago or something. And I, I played um, Andrew Klein some of what I had. And as soon as I started playing it, he said, oh, he said, man, people were just shit. That's what his words were. Look at I'm just repeating exactly what he said because I remember it word for word. He said people would just shit if they could hear this. Wow. So, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's rehearsal studio quality. It's not bad. It's not recording studio quality, mastered and, you know, like a finished product. Although, having said that, in this day and age with, with modern technology, we can, you know, clean things up, separate things, do all sorts of um, things to improve it so but you know i i i have about eight hours worth of this stuff you know wow of us writing songs yeah so i mean you know there's there's repetitions of songs you know there might be six different versions of crazy train or, or several different versions of crowley or whatever else but it's uh, and there's us you know with ideas that didn't get used and us clouding about and us jamming and it's all good stuff though you know well, it never grows old. I mean, just recently you have the Beatles doing Lennon's last yes. recording from a boombox. That's yes. Yeah. And with a that with AI. Yeah, yeah. In his, yeah, in his in his New York flat. And uh, <clears throat> and they cleaned it up, used his vocals, separated it and got rid of the piano noise and, and all the rest of it. So Yeah. Yeah, they cleaned it up. Originally it was going to be on the anthology and Technology. Yeah, I get better. asked that question off, often. You know, when are you mm -hmm. going to release? It's uh, people started calling it the Holy Grail, bec because it is the Holy Grail of that music of us writing that stuff together. Uh, it's the original version. So, some got changed. Uh, you know, there are bits and pieces that didn't get used, and that. And to people that are big fans, that is the Holy Grail of you know the, the origination of that music. So, um, you know, it was, people have been terming it the Holy Grail and, you know, so it seems a fairly appropriate kind of um, term for that, you know, and I get asked all the time, often, you know, people come into the website, Facebook, whatever, when are you going to release, isn't there a way around, you know, get, getting that stuff released? I would love to release it, I'd release it tomorrow. It'd be huge. I mean, it's it's that band and that version, the Blizzard of Oz band, basically. Um, it's a legendary band, whichever way you cut it. You know, that was it was a that wasn't. And correct me if I'm wrong. That was a time when Ozzy, right after Sabbath, he was at his lowest. Right? Correct at that point in his life. Well, yeah, I, I was. You know, me, me specifically, but all of us, we were all sort of trying to support him, bring him back up. He was down and, and, and understandably, you know, he, 
he said it was like going through a divorce and it was uh, he wasn't in a good place so you know he had been with black sabbath for about 11 years i think it was and to be not in that band um hurt him a lot but uh you know i i i he used to call me sid serious because i used to get serious about the music and serious about you know us all being together sort of thing getting ourselves together you know not drinking too much not staying up too too late um, you know being together to do you know the job probably yeah and uh, i i think it did help him a lot you know he had support from us and and that you know but that's that was that was the object of the exercise so in, in during that time in the band would you yeah. in, back rehearse and trying to keep it together were you the guy like okay let's stay on track here because there's always one guy that has to want to keep it on track yeah right? yeah yeah i'd say i'd say i had the um what he termed the <laughs> the sid serious hat on you know because yeah. we'd be in the studio and and we we'd do takes at ridge farm it was you know and and we'd do takes of stuff we'd go in and listen and i'd say hmm let's do it again let's change this or let's do that or whatever i mean randy was a brilliant musician um but but he'd never really been in a, a heavy heavy band you know because he came from quiet riot which were like a sort of glam rock band more commercial radio friendly glam rock sort of stuff but he was a, a brilliant player mind-blowing player you know we, we all loved him you know but but he he hadn't been in a band like we got Lee Kerslake from Uriah Heep, we've got Ozzy from Black Sabbath. I had just come from Rainbow, so we'd all come from, you know, real real McCoy heavy rock bands. You know, yeah, so that was, yeah, that was uh, the environment that that Randy needed to be in to bring that out of him. But uh, yeah, I I was the one who was um, now it's not near enough is not good enough. You know, let's keep going. That was Mr. Bob Daisley. Check out for fact's sake. His book links are in our description down below. I just click right above here and you can see this episode unedited and our members only. Make sure you join today. In the meantime, put your comments down below for Bob and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Thanks for watching and who loves you, baby? We do. Wow. Yeah. And I want to give a big thank you to Writers and Rockers Coffee Company. Adika Live, Artist on Record, will be partnering up with them. So check out our coffee beans. We'll put our links down below in the description. Let me know how you like those beans. We'll see you all later.